opened in 1855 by the Sisters of Notre Dame, now slated for demolition. Follow me as I venture inside to see what remains. In 1947, the world watched as 23 German doctors were put on trial for monstrous medical experiments on human beings during World War II. They were found guilty of torturing concentration camp prisoners by immersing them in icy water, injecting them with plague, placing them in vacuum chambers, and forcing them to swallow seawater. Seven of the doctors were sentenced to hang, others got long-term prison sentences, and Americans were horrified by their crimes. They just didn't know, or perhaps they just didn't care, that doctors right here in the United States also were using unwilling volunteers in their quest for wonder drugs, miracle cures, injecting them with disease, tainting their food, and exposing them to illness. The Catholic-run St. Vincent's Home for Orphans in the Tacony section of Philadelphia, more than a hundred children younger than eight were used in 1907 for a series of diagnostics tests in which tuberculin formula was placed in their eyes, leaving some to go blind. Walter Reed, the doctor famous for tracing yellow fever to mosquitoes, used children in New York orphanages to study smallpox vaccines, and Jonas Salk used kids in Pennsylvania institutions to test the polio vaccine. Salk was working for years to prevent polio. He needed a test population. He found it in institutions perceived to hold damaged and defective humans. If you're going to do something that was risky, you do it on people who are thought to have less value, so that you, the investigator, were less likely to face negative comments and less likely to face lawsuit. It was perceived that kids in orphanages have no rights. Such practices went on all over the country and were well known in the medical community. Few doctors ever spoke out against the practice. In more recent years, St. Vincent's was used to host a program for at-risk teens who will soon become mothers, a public-private partnership between Catholic Social Services and the Philadelphia's Department of Human Services. The initiative provided housing, counseling, and parenting courses for an average of 10 young women at any given time. Around 2019, an application was submitted to form a new charter school on the site. However, this does not appear to have been approved, and in early 2020, bids were put out to have sections of the roof replaced. However, in October of 2020, the city issued a full demolition permit for all structures on the property. As of mid-2021, no work has begun. However, it's only a matter of time until this part of history is turned into another warehouse, shopping center, or overpriced apartment complex. Until next time, explorers, stay safe.